from Hollywood. We're just going to get right into this. It's the, 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 the Tom Likas Show. Monkey time, monkey time. Everybody knows what that is. And now, and now here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. What a day. The stock market dropped as much as 800 points today before finally setting, settling in and dropping only about 370 points when the dust settled. A man in Porter Ranch, which is in the northwestern part of the San Fernando Valley, uh, apparently killed his wife, his mother-in-law, and his kids before killing himself. Uh, he worked apparently for Price Waterhouse, and they say he had financial difficulties. I mean, how bad is it? How bad is it going to get? How bad has it been for you? How bad? How much have you lost? 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. It's 1-800-5800-866-TONY on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Tony. Hey, I think I have a solution for that. I'm actually a National Guard uh, soldier. I've yeah. been deployed twice to Iraq. If all these people would throw some balls and help us, because I know a lot of soldiers been there. Myself, I've been there twice. But there's soldiers that have been there up to four or five times. And if you're 42 and under, you know, and you don't have a job, might as well join the military, you know, help us out a little. Well, I think that's for the uh, the lower end where people are really, really, really desperate with no college and uh, no hope of getting employment. Even even if you have college, I'm pretty sure you could come in. You know, they have a lot of uh, opportunities to become, like, officers and stuff with college, you know. It's just the hardest part is getting through their basic training, and basic training is, you know, cakewalk nowadays. Well, uh, you know, again, uh, the military, I, I love those guys. I wish them all the luck in the world. I want them to be paid as well as they can be, and I want us to treat our men as well as, as is possible in a country in trouble like this. Uh, but, uh, uh, you know, again, my, my recommendation is that if you have the ability, if you have the education uh, to be uh, going out there and trying to keep your career going, you should be doing that. Uh, or building a new career for yourself. Uh, that we, we just don't pay our military men as well as we should. And I, I can't recommend that somebody with an education waste their time. Well, if, you know, if they're smart about it, you know, just live through it. You know, put in your three years. You know, put in your three years. And if you like it, stay with it. If not, they give you housing and everything, you know. Myself, I came back from Iraq and I got a job in construction. You know, I hustle my ass every day, you know, just to make money for my family. You know what I mean? It doesn't it doesn't hurt to get your hands dirty. Well, I understand that, but uh I'd rather get my hands dirty for better compensation. Roger. <laughs> I mean, hey, let, let's put it this way. If if for some reason uh this radio station went off the air today, I don't think I would want to be applying down at the uh, recruiting center. Yeah. I think I'd want to keep going and uh, find a way to keep my career moving. Uh, hey, Tom, can you take me out to Kirkle Bay, Tom? I certainly can. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Renee on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. How are you? I'm alive and kicking in Orange County. I'm disappointed on the vice president of the largest bank in Orange County, though. What the heck exactly did that tool do with all his money that he was making? Well over six figures. Well, that's a good question, and that's exactly who I've been talking to all these years and telling them what to do. You know what I've been telling people to do. Have at least six months of, of living expenses stashed. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of on a similar boat. I've saved a bunch of money, bought a bunch of property. I sold my two houses. I still got some property. My, uh, funds are getting low, but it's like, you know, uh, you gotta, all these people that have to live in Orange County and have to drive all the fancy cars and all of that stuff, I'm like, I don't understand how these people that are making, he's probably, he's probably making 150, 200 grand, maybe 160 grand. How could that guy not have been socking away at least like 10 or 20% every single year into some separate cash fund, you know? No doubt. No doubt about it. 
What's interesting to me is, did you notice on the story for this uh, guy that shot his family and everything, did you notice that the uh, article even says that police said the gunman was not the owner of the home? So even that guy didn't even know his home that he was living in. Right. That's exactly right. Well, we don't know uh, what the arrangement was there, but you are right. And then you got the Lehman execs, which are getting millions of dollars in bonuses. So those guys are just r greedy crooks, right? Well, no, no. I mean, they're not crooks. Uh, a crook breaks the law. Okay, I guess I could retract that. So they're just greedy. Well, and, and by the way, you can't attack greed. You know who you can attack? The morons who allow greed to be perpetuated that way. Yeah, that's you that's know, if you're a shareholder of Lehman, Correct. and you're allowing people to collect huge golden parachutes when the company is tanking, you're the fool. Oh, completely, completely. But, but the rest of us are not responsible. And look, uh, my attitude about money is if you can get it, you should take it. And there's no law against it. I mean, I want this company I work for to pay me as much as is humanly possible. I want them to pay me the max. Uh, do I care uh, where the money came from? No, I want as much as I can get. And so does everybody else. That includes you. Yeah, of course, but my, 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 I guess where I catalog it as greed is, for example, um, do you try to pay Dean the least amount of money possible? I don't pay these guys. Well, obviously it, I know the, I know, your... I know the company does. I know the company tries to pay them as little as possible. Yeah, but it's obviously enough to where they're told. Totally That's stuck, the company. Right? Look, the company answers to the shareholders. Correct. And so uh, the job of the management is to try to hold the salaries down as low as they possibly can. Yeah, it's uh, just... That's their job. Owning beans. Yeah, I mean, it's business. I mean, and there's nothing wrong with it, I guess, to a certain extent. Well, that's you why there's this word greed. It's like people talk about price gouging. Oh, my God, gas was $8 a gallon in Galveston, Texas. So what? There's a limited amount of gasoline. You know what? If you're driving a gas guzzler and you get stuck in one of those situations, F you. Yeah, you know, I drive, I drive a gas guzzler in a sense. I've got a truck that gets 14 miles a gallon, but I also have two motorcycles, and I only drive my truck in the last four years when I absolutely have to. You know what? After a hurricane, you're lucky a gas station was open in Galveston, Texas, you moron. How can you complain about price gouging? You're lucky you get any goddamn gasoline. Yeah, and that's the same idiot, though, that's got to go down to Starbucks and, and spend a fortune on his, on his uh, coffee, but he won't complain about that. Well, I, I, I've told everybody about this. If you don't know about it, if you're insisting on going to Starbucks, I think it's a bad idea. But if you're insisting on it, Costco is selling co uh, uh, Starbucks gift cards for 20% off. Yeah, exactly. So well, you, you get 100 you know, bucks worth of gift card for 80 bucks. Yeah, as you know, you can get just about anything anymore at Costco at a pretty good deal, you know, well, if you're smart about it. I'm just trying to, to, to hip everybody to the jive here. You know what I'm saying? 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Amado on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How are you, bro? I'm okay. I know you mostly, bro. But listen, you know what? This is crazy. What is crazy? Your phone cut out. Oh, can you hear me? You know, um, I hear you. I me? just didn't hear what's crazy. Just repeat that part. You know, it's crazy that um, a lot of us work very hard to make money, and we do everything, follow the rules, go to school, get an education. You know, I used to be a migrant worker with my father and mother. Said, you know what? I have to go to school, educate myself. I waited until I was forty to have a kid. You know, everything was going well. Then I decided to go buy a second house. So I go buy a second house in uh, Chino Hills, thinking, you know what, this is going to be a good investment. I go in with a partner. What made you think that? Oh, my God. You know what? My friend was into real estate. He made millions of dollars. So I was like, you know what? I got greedy. I said, you know what? I'm going to be like him. I'm going to be a big boy. Oh, wait a minute. Did, did you ever think, of course you didn't, did you ever think that after 9-11, the Federal Reserve Bank lowered short-term interest rates to the lowest uh, rate since the 50s. Yeah. And, and long-term rates, which are the rates that mortgage is based on, soon followed. And that meant that lots of people were getting low, low, low uh, arms, you know, adjustable rate mortgages uh, that would readjust in five years. It didn't take a big brain. To figure out that five years from 2002 is 2007, and that's when everything was going to fall apart. Yep. Didn't didn't you think about that? No, you didn't. Oh, I did. What happened to me, Tom, was that I trusted my friend. You know, he was like my brother. 
And when it was time to be a man and stand up and fight the fight with me and finish the house and get out, he ran away. But the point is, you shouldn't have been buying houses as an investment. What do you know about the real estate business? Exactly, Tom. I'm a teacher, you know. What do I know about real, uh, real estate, you know? But I did, I did a smart investment. I bought my first house in Redondo Beach for $170,000. But you lived in it. I live in it. Oh, yeah. That's, but the point is, you know, the house you live in, you can't look at it as an investment. Exactly. Because no, if you're no. living in it, you're not going to sell it. Oh. <laughs> like people tell me, yo, your house on the hills is probably worth 25% less now. What do I care? You know yeah. who's going to be selling my house? The executor of my will. That's who's going to be selling my house, not me. What do I care what price my house is? If I'm not selling it, what's the difference? Yeah. And so then when you buy a house beyond the one you're living in, that's when you're on thin ice. Because you don't know anything about that business. Well, now, let me tell you what happened now, Tom. I lost that house in Chino Hills. The, the house in L.A. that I have, I'm about to lose it because the lady, I came in to help her, and she said, help me out for a year. It's been four years, and she cannot get a loan or nothing to get her house back. And I tried to help her out. Now I'm stuck with a loan with her house. She cannot sell it. I'm That's, stuck with that. Yeah, but you see, you dug your own grave. You did it. Yeah, I did you it. You did it to yourself. I did it all to myself. And now you are screwed. Yeah, you know what, Tom? I'm going to tell you the truth. When I came here, I had nothing. I was a migrant worker. I, I was born here in this beautiful nation. They took me back to Mexico, came back. I'll make it again, Tom. And I'll well, make it sooner this time. Good for you. I wish you luck. Thanks a lot for the call. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. It's Pete on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello. Yes. Tom, this is Pete calling from Chino Hills. Long-time listener, first-time caller. Thank you so much. I need you to provide a form for all of us listeners for IndyMac. I had $400,000 in there. Government had no problem taking 100000 of my hard-earned money. But now they're going to bail out everyone who doesn't deserve to be bailed out. What about us people with a had our uninsured money in there? Well, first of all, why were you putting more than $100,000 in an account? Well, for one, IndyMac's the only one that had that teaser rate, and I was using the interest to help subsidize my house payment like everyone but else. But don't you know you only get short up to $100,000? The answer is yes. Well, yeah, I did know that, but at the but time... But you did it anyway. Me, yeah, absolutely. Bad choice. Bad choice on your part. It's your fault. Nevertheless, not based on greed. It was just based on something I needed to Yes, do it was money. based on greed because the fact is you could have put the excess into an account at another bank and where your money would have been safe, would have been fully insured, and you wouldn't be in this position now. But to get a few dollars more interest, you threw it all in one bank that went down. Absolutely. Bad decision. It was, it, no, it was not just a bad decision. It was a bad decision based on greed on your part. That may be so, but how is it the government bails out everyone that doesn't deserve to be bailed out? Now you don't their... deserve it either. You knew the rules when you did that. Of course I deserve it. Everyone's getting no, bailed out you don't. Fifty. But you don't deserve it. I mean, I don't think the others deserve it either, but you certainly don't. Well, certainly more than the people that made bad decisions based on these greedy mortgages. What do you think? You, you, you were as greedy as anybody else. And, and by the way, you sold yourself like a cheap whore. I mean, would you make a few extra dollars by keeping it all in indie back? That's it. A bucks. So, so the thing is, you were not only greedy; you were you were a cheap prostitute. <laughs> all because you were too lazy to put a hundred thousand in Indy Bank and a hundred thousand in the Chorus Bank and a hundred thousand in Citibank and a hundred thousand in Wells Fargo. You were too goddamn lazy and greedy. Well, trust me, Tom. And that, sold that yourself cheap. And we, and we should bail you out because you were too lazy to have accounts in more than one bank. I had accounts in more than one bank. I just, as circumstances prevailed, I need to put it in the highest interest bearing account, which happened no, to be No, you the didn't. Time. You, you, you keep the maximum amount that the FDIC insured and not a penny more. Yeah, well, IndyMac made some failed decisions as well on informing me about qualified beneficiaries at the time. My dad had just died. My mom was in the hospital dying. I just got a divorce. I didn't have any qualified pennies. They assured me if I had two and, people on and the of account, course you I'd ran this. Uh, of course you ran this past your attorney, right? No, you didn't, you lazy bastard. And now you want the rest of us to bail you out. Well, they're bailing everyone else out. I'm thinking under the circumstances. Well, I think it's only you know fair. what? No, no. Well, put it this way: they shouldn't be bailing the others out, and they shouldn't be bailing you out either. 
Some like it. 1-800-5800-TIME. 1-800-5800-866. Tom and Jerry in the morning. Hey, good morning. 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 Good morning.
It probably is. Mm -hmm. Thank you for taking me. Thank you. I'll take you anytime. <laughs> take you tonight about 9 o'clock. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Manny on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello, Tom. How's it going? Okay, Manny. Yeah, I'd just like to uh, talk about the piss poor excuse of a man that decided to take him and his family out. You know, that wasn't cool at all. Well, uh, you know, uh, there's no words to describe how tragic that is. And there is no words. You know, I'd rather just go out and go to dumpsters and collect cans and recycle to do something. You know I mean, I'm a first time father. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm, I'm a new father. I got a 10 month old baby girl, you know, and I would never ever bring myself to do something like that. You know what I mean? If I would ever to get laid off from work, I'd rather go, like I said, go collect cans. Go panhandle, do something, you know what I mean? There's other people already doing that out there, you know what I mean? That are homeless, you know? What would, what, what, you know, damn, I can't believe what drove that guy to do that. You know, that's, that's insane. Well, um, I'm just trying to guess here because all I have is this story. Uh, but I think an awful lot of people who are living high on the hog have a hard time showing their face. Uh, when uh, they have to uh, walk around telling people I lost my house, I lost my job. My stocks went down 50%. I think they have a hard time facing all the people they've been bragging to. That they had all this, they had all that, and then all of a sudden right. it all crumbled, and it all just went to That's down, right. the, down the drain. That's you know? right. That's right. Yeah, you know, and then I, I work in construction, you know. I make a decent amount of money, you know, and I, I would never. I, I just I just wanted to comment about that, you know. That's. That's, well, for now, you're making a decent amount of money, but if these uh, construction companies and contractors start shutting down jobs, you won't be. Oh, exactly right. I won't, I won't be. I won't. And then I would have to go out and fend another way. You know, I would have to um, somehow uh, create money or get money some other way, you know, rather than just take the easy way out and decide to kill my mother-in-law, my wife, and my two kids. No way. No well, and I have to imagine if somebody does that, and I'm not defending it, I think it's terrible, but I have to imagine they thought ahead and said, you know, if I'm going to kill myself, how are my kids going to go on? How's my wife going to go on? So we decided they wouldn't have to live that way. But gee, thanks. Okay, can you take me out uh, bong style? I certainly can. <laughs> Mike on the Tom Likas show. Hello. What's going on, Dad? Not much, son. Hey, uh, you know, I just want to uh, totally agree what you were talking about. I work for Riverside County Sheriff's, and uh, as far as crime going up, yes, it's actually going up. Internet crimes, uh, people getting carjacked, purses, I mean, all that's going up due to the economical situation. So people be aware because people are doing whatever they have to do to get money. Yeah. I mean, this is a good time to invest in the security system, good time to join your neighborhood watch. Because I think crime is going way, way up. Yep, yep, yes it is. Yes it is. It's, it's, it's going up. I mean, it's, it's getting worse every day. A lot of assaults, a lot of robberies, a lot of carjacking, salt, deadly weapons, a lot of break-ins. So people just don't be leaving your stuff laying around. People will take advantage. Don't leave your car stereos, no purpose, no uh, purses, your Gucci bags. People are doing whatever it takes. And, and, and takes connect me if I, connect me, yes, correct me if I'm wrong, Mike. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, you're seeing it happening, but it hasn't turned up in the crime figures yet because those numbers take a few months before they catch up with what's really going on. That's true. Yes, I agree. All right, but so, it is going up. I'm seeing it. So just want to tell you I agree with you. Thank you for that, Mike. All right. Appreciate the call. All right. There's the police calling in telling you the same thing. Crime is going up. It's already going up. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Here's Jim on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. How are you? Doing great. Tom, I've been living off my FU fund since December. Wow. I, I worked for a Fortune 500 company for eight years, and I saved. I saw the writing on the wall. I saw this coming. I started cutting back. And during this whole time I've been off, I've been paying my overhead, which is about $4,500 a month, no problem. Wow. And I have money to save uh, more. And this, this entire time that I've been uh, off of work, I've been studying the market. And, and my portfolio has gone up 6% during that time. Really? Yeah, I've taught myself how to read charts and the whole deal. Good for so, you. 
people out there that are whining and crying about losing their money, this, that, and the other thing, why don't you get home from work, get on the Internet, start educating yourself so you can have a little bit of an edge? Very good points. To say, Tom. Jim, thank you for that. Shauna on the Tom Likas show at half past the hour. Hello. Hello. Shauna, yes. Tom, I want you to, everyone needs to take responsibility for their actions, but I want you to Google a name named Roland Arnall. He is the founder and the owner of AmeriQuest Mortgage. The man is a multi, multi billionaire on Forbes list of many rich people. This is a man who I've worked close with and did uh, most of his evictions for of people all over the country. This man had his, you know, the, the people who do the lenders and, and write the loans and stuff, just fraudulent activities, fraudulent activities. And now there are a lot of people out there who, of course, you ought to blame. But there are many people out there who wanted to refinance their homes and and they put it down on paper and said, sure, we can we can do this, we can do this. All these people are losing their homes. Meanwhile, President Bush has made this man the ambassador. Well, Roland Arnall died, did he not? Oh yes, he just died like maybe six months ago. But right. meanwhile, his 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 uh, his uh, nephew is a big attorney at a big you know law firm in Los Angeles. I better not say the name. They're just rolling in the money from this man's fraudulent activities, and it's very interesting because I knew the family very well. The family was a big supporters of Clinton, gave lots of money during that time, because they, of course, knew that he was going to win the election. Then when it came time for the opposite party to roll around, they gave money to Bush, lots of money to the Bush. Meanwhile, Bush decides to make him the ambassador. He skips off to another country, leaves his knowing that America's mortgage is getting ready to go tank up, and, you know, he skips town. Oddly enough, comes back, karma bites him in the ass, he died on this basically. But his family's just rolling in the money from all of this. Well, uh, again, uh, he what he did was legal. Named Roland Arnall and President Bush. It's very interesting to me. Well, uh, why would you be surprised? Uh, President Bush's father presided over the bailout of the savings and loans, uh, if you'll recall. That happened uh, under uh, George W. Bush's watch. And uh, now you've got George Bush, uh, uh, George H.W. was the first one. And then you got George W. now, who, uh, uh, you know, he's presiding over the biggest uh, financial calamity uh, of most people's lifetime right now. Well, I think it's about time we get someone in there uh, with a brain like Obama who can sort this mess out. Well, uh, yeah, for, uh, from your lips, you know what I'm saying? one eight hundred five eight hundred. tom is our telephone number. It's Mike. Hello. Hey, Tom. How's it going? Doing okay, Mike. Good. So um, I've heard the term money you have now. It's not money you're going to have in five years. And um, I'm a college student, um, you know, 20 years old, not making, you know, very much money at all. Um, and I just put away about 500 into a savings account. Um, and I know I've been listening to you, you know, saying, you know, you need to have six months of, of pay saved up. Um, now, as a co- from a college student perspective, is, is that the same, same idea? Do you, do you feel the same way if you're a college student? or Specifically what? Well, the same way? I don't understand. Do I feel the same way if you're a college student? What? Right. Should I be doing the same thing as, you know, people who are out of college and, and just start saving now? Yes, um, you should start saving as soon as you can. Do you, know right, what, cool. do you know when I started saving? I started saving, believe it or not, uh, when I was seven. And the there reason I started saving was because a local bank came into my uh, elementary school mm-hmm. and started what they called student savings accounts. Mm-hmm. And everybody got a passbook. And you were encouraged to put, you know, quarters, dollars, five dollars checks you got for your birthday for twenty five dollars whatever you encourage to put all that in yeah and then every month they'd come around collect your passport collect your deposit and then they would show you the interest you had earned and right. at seven i was hooked you should be saving as soon as you think about saving yeah and it's kind of just started hitting me um you know inspiration from you um so yeah thanks i just i just wanted to kind of clarify with that just make sure i'm on the right track that's the deal 
Alrighty, Tom. Thank you, Mike. Appreciate the call. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. We started off talking about a family in Porter Ranch, which is in the northwest San Fernando Valley. Uh, a man killed uh, apparently his wife, uh, his mother-in-law, and his kids, then killed himself. Uh, he worked for Price Waterhouse. He killed himself over financial problems. Have you been feeling desperate like that? 1 800 5 800 Tom. Like it. Like it. 1 800 5 800 866. Tom. 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 The Tom Like His Show. Tom Likas in Hollywood at 1 800 5 800 Tom. The Dow Jones average dropped as much as 800 points today. Ended up down only about 370 points. Ooh, thank goodness. And uh, a guy in our backyard, practically, uh, Porter Ranch, apparently due to financial difficulties, went out and killed his wife, his mother-in-law, and his kids, then he killed himself. It's a story you'll be hearing about for the next day or two. And I'm wondering how desperate you're feeling right now. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Brett on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How are you? Doing great. Good. Glad to hear it. Tom, first of all, it's just uh, it's refreshing to hear somebody in uh, in the media uh, stress that we need to take uh, personal responsibility. You know, there's so many uh, people, you know, you have the, you know, we're blessed that you're on the air, but you have the ability to talk to so many people, and so many people in your uh, line of work are just pointing fingers at everybody under the sun. And it's, uh, I think it's time to you know, step up to the plate and take responsibility. I mean, most of the uh, of the problem stems from the fact that Americans went out there and got uh, a loan for $2,700 a month, knowing that they make $2,900 a month in income, and somehow figured that they were going to be able to make that mortgage payment. Yeah. I think it's time we, we all sort of uh, stepped up and took responsibility. Well, no doubt about that. Uh, I think it's time everybody took responsibility for our part in, in what happened here. Well, and it's uh, yeah, the, to hear somebody say that. The moronic flippers. You know, you, know, you want to start prosecuting people? How about the idiots who suddenly thought they were in the real estate business? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Let, let's start with them. Thing while I have you on the phone, Tom, um, I'm uh, I, I'm a writer. Is, uh, is what I do for a living. It's absolutely pathetic to hear how many people call up your show and can't get through a conversation with you without dropping an f bomb or uh, using some other four letter word. It blows my mind how bad the uh, the uh, communication skills have gotten in our country. Well, yeah, you know, I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that people communicate now by text messages <laughs> and emails. And everything is LOL and BFFs, and uh, you know the deal. Uh, people, but, uh, people, people can't tell. Be out here, Tom. Keep up the good work, and uh, if you could take me out with a uh, "Don't Tase Me, Bro." All right, Brett. Here you go. What did I do? Get off me! Get off my face, Get the f off me, man! I didn't do anything. Don't tase me, bro. Don't tase me. I didn't. Will on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Will. Hey, how you doing, Tom? Don't mean to interrupt, Will. Oh, no, no, no. I was, I was just uh, actually listening for you here. Hey, uh, yeah, Tom, i uh, talk about it. I just got laid out four weeks ago. was in a construction-related business, and, uh, yeah, it's uh, tough, tough going out there. Did you put some money away for a rainy day, Will? Uh what? Uh, I had a little money put away, and it's uh, quickly. Uh, yeah. Well, how much? How much is a little money? I had I had two and a half months worth of, of money put away. Well, you're supposed to have between six months and a year. Yeah. Well, that's yeah. That's the uh, yeah. I, I I get where you're coming from, Tom. You know. But, but now, yeah. now you see why. Exactly, and you know what? A lesson learned here. A expensive lesson learned. Yeah. yeah. What do you do now? Now that you've uh, run out of money. Oh well, I mean, I'm, uh, you know, hopefully, I still got a couple options. I'm trying to run, uh, fall back onto my old experience here, trying to get a menial job. I, I had a pretty good paying job before, and now it's just basically making adjustments. Uh, you know, come down to a certain lifestyle. You know. Yeah. What college did you go to? Uh, actually, uh, I went to a community college. Aren't you sorry you didn't go to a real college? I, I, I did not go to a four year. No, I did Aren't not. Aren't you I, sorry you didn't? Oh, yeah, I am. Yes, I am. I'm sorry. 
Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry that I didn't go through for here. And get a real degree? Uh, and get a real degree. Instead exactly. of getting a degree named after a 12-step program? I have never been to a 12-step, nope. <laughs> never been to that. Do you have an AA? Uh, yes, I do. Do you have an NA? Uh, no, I don't. Do you have an OA? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. A straight AA. Straight AA. Yes. Very that's nice. Not, that's not and where do you get that from? A higher power? Uh, no, no, no. I just got that from community college. Very oh. nice. Well, yeah. well, uh, the, and you see how good that community college uh, was for you. Well, you like I said, it takes money to make money. I guess in this world, so you know, just uh, lessons learned here. Uh, yeah, you know, I'm thinking of doing a couple other options here. You know, probably making a total lifestyle and lifestyle change here and. Uh, Moving on to something else, you know. Well, good luck on that. Barb on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. How are you? Great. Pleasure talking to you. I have sure it is. My co-workers cannot believe I, I listen to your show. Neither can I. <laughs> Shut up. Anyways, I work for a mortgage company. We closed just over a year ago, and we had a real high-level VP. Probably made over $700,000 a year. So, you know, we all closed. About two weeks later, we got word that he jumped off a bridge that won't remain nameless, but a famous bridge back east. Really? After after they, you know, they saw him jump, they weren't sure who he was. They went to his car, and there was a note in his car directing the police to find his wife's body in their home because he had murdered her. Holy cow. Yeah, it was in the news. They forwarded news, you know. And you were feeling sorry for yourself. You know, actually, I kind of wasn't because I knew I could see it coming, so I saved. I put money away, so I had no problem surviving until I found another job. Well, I'm glad that worked out for you, Barb. As for your former boss, yikes. I know. Well, ironically enough, and maybe you put your spin on this, but his wife was quite a bit younger than him, and she was a stay-home trophy wife, so I'm wondering if the pressure of not being able to support her lifestyle played a little bit into his decision. Uh, now, by the way, did he do her in, too, or just himself? No, he murdered her. He left a note in his car. Oh, boy. He murdered her, and, oh, this is the best. I mean, it's sad, but um, they didn't find his body. I can, I can tell you're weeping over there. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, but it was tragic a year ago. Now it's just kind of pathetic. Come on. You didn't think it was tragic. You were laughing your ass off. No, no, I, you know, I honestly was speechless and that's hard for me to be speechless but it, it was because you when you know somebody or you think you know them you don't think they do something like this i don't know i guess we all just take it the way we take it and people have their push you know buttons that push them and others don't somebody i went to high school with killed his mother and his uh, sister so uh i know what you mean lovely well listen it was a pleasure talking to you and i love your show Talk to you soon, Barb. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to Andre of the Tom Likas Show. What's going on, Tom? Not much, Andre. I think I have a theory on why this guy did this. I believe that his bitch ran up all the bills, so he smoked her. The mom supported it, and he smoked her. <laughs> Killed the kids because he didn't want them in the first place. What do you think about that? Well, uh, you know what? Your theory is as good as any. I'm sure the people in Porter Ranch are sitting there uh, having that same conversation. Well, maybe not. 1-800-5800-TOM. Michael on the Tom like his show. Hello. Hey, what's going on? How much? I uh, just wanted to talk about my difficulties financially. Uh, oh, wait, you've got to speak a little uh, louder and more clearly. I can't hear you. Sorry about that. I'm on the road. Um wanted to talk about my difficulties financially. Why do you have financial difficulties? Because I'm an idiot. Yeah, I'll, I'll buy that. Uh, credit card debt about thirty six thousand. Thirty six thousand dollars in credit card debt. Why? Living the life. Living know? what life? Living the ridiculous life. Like what? What were you spending money on? You know, I have nothing to show for it. Yo, know, what were you spending money on that you don't have to show? Clothes, going out. Going out. Thirty-six thousand dollars, and what's the interest rate you're paying on that debt? Ten percent. Ten percent. So uh, you're paying what about four thousand dollars a year in interest? 
I, I haven't added the numbers. I guess so. That's great. I know it's ridiculous. Yeah, and you're paying probably more than that because that interest compounds. I have savings of about eight thousand. I'm getting out. Of, I'm taking it out and I'm putting it towards my credit card. Um, you know, I'm trying to. I'm getting a part time job. Um, I make about forty three thousand now. It's not wait a minute. Much. You 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 owe thirty six thousand dollars in credit card debt, and you only make forty three thousand a year. Yeah, meaning you only bring home about thirty three thousand a year. So you actually owe more than a year's salary. Yeah. Whatever gave you the idea you could do that? Just, uh, you know, I, I really can't explain it. I mean, you you were a loser to begin with, with as little as you make. What made you think you would ever be able to pay that off? You know, just it kept on adding up. Two ended up five, five ended up 15, and there you go. Didn't you look at those statements every month when they were coming in? Yeah. Did you ever read the amount of finance charges you were paying? I did. And you didn't care? No. Why not? I always figured I'd pay it back somehow. How? You have no ability. You probably don't even have a college degree, correct? Right. Yeah. So you have no ability, no skills, no degree. What made you think you would ever be able to pay that back? Honestly, I, I just figured it was a way that it was going to be What possible. way? What yeah. way? Tell me the way. Two, three jobs, whatever it's But you were not doing two or three jobs. You were busy partying. Yeah, I was. So where were the two or three jobs going to start? It's going to start soon, I guarantee soon. you Soon, yes, soon. Well, now, no, now they're going to start soon. Or you'll be in debtor's prison, you and Ed McMahon. Yeah. And we're supposed to feel sorry for we, are you? Not at all. Are we? Not at all. I don't want anyone to feel sorry. Don't worry. We don't. The Tom Likas Show.